Hello everybody, this is John from PhoneDog.com and I got home late last night from London and I do mean late. The trip was full of delays, mix-ups and confusion but I got a free trip to England so you know what can I say, I have no complaints. There were a lot of uh, seasoned professionals at this event, some of the biggest names in tech blogging and I'm sure you've already seen their posts on the Hero. Uh, great pictures, all the specifications and some great writing. And I felt like not only was that content going to be available, but uh, going up against you know people like Engadget and sites like that, I didn't want to deliver a, a lesser post. So I decided to approach this from a different perspective. If I hadn't gone, I would be wondering, what goes on at these things? What is it really like to be there? So I've decided to try to deliver that experience to you through a series of videos. And I'm not really sure how many yet because I'm not done editing it. After the unveiling, they broke us into groups of 8 to 12 people, and then we got to spend time with one of three executives for about 20 minutes. My group was uh, fortunate enough to be placed in a room with HTC's Chief Innovations Officer, Horace Luke. Also in the room was Cool Hunting's Tim Yu, and Cool Hunting is a site dedicated to style and design. So Tim Yu was asking Horace Luke all kinds of questions that got him speaking pretty passionately about the design of the hero, and I think it's fascinating stuff, and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get to it. I believe that people want one hand device. Yes, there are some people who want tablets and some people, you know, do, do a bunch of different gestures on the tablet. But fundamentally, people would still want a phone to phone factor because we all want to be stylish. They want to put it in the pocket and not have to worry about it bulging out and left and right. right? Um, <clears throat> so the form factor actually came from, you know, this kind of ergonomic fundamental. And then, on top of that, I think feeling the product is very different too. When you touch something, you know, you buy a thing, you can tell when you put your fingertip on it is whether or not it's leather or fake leather. You can feel it. You can feel something is different. And in our case, this feels different because it's just very soft and almost ceramic-like. And most people don't know why, why it feels like that. Uh, but it, they just know that it feels special and different. And we want to do that. And then, you know, <clears throat> of course, you guys look at a lot of style and design, right? You see people exploring different, different textures and different materials. That's, what, you know, same thing with phone design. Phone design is getting to be this very fashion-driven design. You know, when you leave your phone at home, you, you go back and get it. But if you leave your wallet, you can probably borrow money from your colleague to get through the day. It's okay. But you lose your phone, oh my God, end of the world, you know? Right? You go at home getting that phone, or you calling everybody trying to figure out where, where did you leave that phone? These are lifestyle statements these days. You know, why have something that look like the guy next door that has, has the same thing? Um, that's what I push my team to go do. And, and that translated into UI, translated to hardware. So, did you have a particular subset of people in mind that you, you know, were designing for? I think it's a. Uh, <clears throat> if you ask people what they want for a design, they won't tell you. They can't because they don't know. But they can judge. They can say, "I like or don't like." That's it. I like it or I don't like it. What we want to do is create something that was eye-catching, that was a controversial, you know, con conversation piece. Um, that at least it looks a little bit different than anything else you have in the market. Um, that to me is the most exciting part. Is to create something that people can aspire to and look at and go, wow, that's kind of cool. Have you seen that HTC phone? Which one are you talking about? You know, I'm talking about the one with the, you know, with the angle. You can go like this, bam, instantly, right? Easy to communicate. I think this is is a great design because it pushes the boundary of what people are comfortable with calling a phone as a design and the UI, you know. I mean, the lusciousness of the UI when you saw it, it was I got an amazing UI team, you know, that just continued to push back on both usability and also 
visual design of the world. Um, getting a bit more specific, how did you guys accomplish um, the sort of anti-smudge? Is a coating that we put on the screen. The anti-fingerprint isn't exactly finger. It's like waterproof versus water resistant. It's not fingerproof, fingerprint proof. But what it does do is when you put it in your pocket, and then you take it because you, you, you go through the day just you know having it in your pocket because it's so easy to get fingerprint off it. See that? I just by putting it in my pocket and taking it out, the fingerprint just completely wiped off. So every time you take your device out of the pocket or out of a pouch, you feel like a completely cleaned off, brand new device. That's that's the beauty of this coating. But it's a coating on top of the glass that makes us do that. It's molecularly bonded into the glass. And what are the advantages of the, the Teflon coating, which is only on the white one, correct? Uh, <clears throat> it's on the white one and uh, not on the brown one. But we have other colors that you know we work on. And is it just something that sort of feels different, or are there specific advantages at all? It feels different. Um, People have not been able to do matte white because it's like a piece of paper, it gets dirty. So every white phone out there has been, you know, glossy white for a reason, for resisting stain. But we wanted to do something almost like ceramic, almost like porcelain. And that was the vision. And in order to do that, they have to develop a new paint process. And it took about six months to, to go through that. The first rep is horrible. The first round, I remember the first round is horrible. That this, you know, took six months to, to get fine tuned to be right. But you know, just those little details matters a lot. How you touch something, how you feel it, is a decision of whether or not you like it or not like it. You know, it's a huge, huge. It might seem like the tiniest of detail, but it, it makes the world a like, decision of whether or not you love something or you don't love something. Can you expand upon? You know, that idea of you know, it being about the tiniest of details, what was so bad about that first round that you didn't like, and, and why is it better now? Teflon did, didn't work well with paint. You know, paint, just like it resists dirt, it resisted paint. <laughs> <laughs> so the first round was horrible. <laughs> but it's, you, know, you keep pushing on, you keep trying new things, you know. And that's the thing about our design team is that. If you look at our design team, it's not a bunch of style masters to style a bunch of design. It's not. Everything from software design to hardware design, every one of them is as engineering focused as they are design focused. They have to figure out how to make it work. They are the modern renaissance men of today. You know, they are the guys that go take a little spark in the dream and they go make it happen. Drew is as technical as you know, probably some of our developers. Because he has to go and argue this the, the like, why can't you do that? I would do it this way. You know? And what about this way? What about that way? You know, so most of our designers are, you know, that's why I got this guy, the big guy right next to me. Because he tells me yes or no, he can do it or not do it. Because I'm not that smart yet. But I think, you know, these, you know, it's about just questioning whether or not you can do it better and do it different. And then just keep trying. Never be fearful of failing. Just try it. People just get it, people just look at it and go, wow, that's cool. And then when they play with the, with the UI, they're like, that's very cool, that's very different you know, than anything else. So I think that's the that's a, that's a good part about this. I think the good part hasn't started yet though, because I, I really look forward to you know, all the developers. Because right now, you know, I'll say honestly, you, know, you take the G1, you know, it's still a very nerdy phone. You know? You know, we probably would carry one or have one, but you know, it's pretty, first generation. I think mean, this doesn't look like first generation anymore. It looks like something's, you know, could be a matter of lifestyle. And then that's when people develop great applications on it. When you talk about developers, are there going to be anything specially for developers to develop for the Hero? Or are there special like SDK hooks or some UI stuff? Or? We're going through that at the moment, making sure that you know most of it is done with a general Google SDK and the alliance there. But if there's something special, we'll make sure we'll, we'll, we'll let the world you know take advantage of it. We're not that you know. I, I just want to see people do cool things with it. 